us our sins, and at our last hour let us not fall away from you. God will show us the path of life. In his presence is the fullness of joy, and at his right hand there is pleasure forevermore. We have entrusted our brother Jack to God's merciful keeping, and we now commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Morning, my dears. A bit too early for me, I'm afraid. Bite of kitchen misery, Boz. You're early, Arthur. That is a miracle of the microwave. Be the first one in your street to get the two-second cup of tea. The thing is, Arthur... Hey, what's the matter with you? You ain't changed your mind, have you? I knocked my pipe out getting this one. No, no, Arthur. It's I'll take you in the back. This is not a good time, Arthur. Uh, you'll be well pleased with this, Boz, believe me. Shop! There you are. Oh, God! Morning. I haven't got the dough, Mr Browning, on my life. 300 a week, it's crippling me. You can take the place apart, it won't make any difference. Take the place apart? You must be thinking there's somebody else, Pop. What's this? Daft old Pratt. What's the delay? I think we've got a non-payment here, Mr Gamage. I may not let you stay in the leisure business, old chap. Huh. Right, gentlemen. You saw him, Arthur, didn't you? I didn't Brian Damage, large as life. You're my witness, Arthur. You saw the whole thing. Arthur! According to my governor, I'm a wholesale distribution operative, which means I hump boxes of exotic liqueurs and drive a van what ought to be put down. Well, according to Arthur, I'm a personal security advisor. Oh, terrific. And here I am, humping boxes of exotic liqueurs. And you ain't even got a van. You might be jealous of you. Watcha! Do you know what time it is? Oh, go on, better come on, shake it like quick. I won't be a minute. Look, we're supposed to be having lunch and I'm starving. Two seconds, I'll be right with you. Come on, you. All right? Right, that's the lot. Now, you've got to pay me or anything? Uh, no, I sorted that with Arthur. Makes sense, doesn't it? Working for Arthur's like working for royalty. You never carry cash. Cheers, son. Here, Tilt. Here we go, then. I thought while you were working with me at the club, you weren't going to have to do all this fetching and carrying for Arthur. Well, he's in a bit of a jam, that's all. He exploits you, Terry. And he don't stole all that again. I... Hello, Doom and Despair Enterprises. I want to meet at the Winchester in five minutes. No, 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 I can't do that. I'm going out to lunch with Annie. No, 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 never mind lunch, Terry. This is double urgent. Matter of life and death. Be there. No! Uncle Arthur. Hmm. 
Listen, can we pop into the Winchester for five I minutes? I want lunch. Something's knocked in bandy. I just Terry, want to... I don't want to go to the Winchester. He might be in a lot of bother. OK. You go and hold Arthur's hand. I'm going to lunch. I'll see you at the club tonight. Thank you, Arthur. May I take this opportunity of wishing you a very happy birthday, Miss South? Thank you. It's number 206. You can examine it over there. Right. Would you like me to remain? Yes, please. In accordance with the wishes of the late Mr. Jack South. It's all right, Mr. Yes. Dryden. I'm familiar with my father's will. You can tell her that's all there is. I can assure you, your mother has. My stepmother. Your stepmother has no interest in the bequest. Goodbye, Mr. Dryden. Uh, please. There she is. So upset, I forgot to collect the 150 notes for the microwave. Is that all? You made a Monza my day just for that? Is that all? Is that... They are not nice people, Terry. Get off. Brain damage ain't gonna put a sticky finger on you. You haven't got enough money. That is a monstrous slur. Who is this brain damage when he's at home? Uh, Brian Gamage. Nasty piece of work from over the water. Somebody ought to chase him back over Battersea Bridge. Look, Boz, Boz, walk and fight his own battles, but you are supposed to fight mine. I want you on call 24 hours a day in case I get a visit. Yeah, but I'm working at the club with Annie tonight, remember? You what? You call that working? Prancing around the penguin suit, touching his forelock to the oi polloi. Listen to him. Just cos Annie got me the job and you did Listen, Terry, in times of crisis, your place is at my side. Well, tomorrow night the regular doorman comes back, so I'll be able to hold your little hand then, all right, dear? Oh, what happens if I get a visit from Brain Damage's firm in the meantime? Do a runner. You're good at them. Tell her, Dave. Where are you going? To find Annie, see if she's still talking to me. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? You pick someone up out of the gut, they give them a job, self-respect, and what do they do? Walk out on you and you're out of need. Ah, oh, well, it's working for you all these years, Arthur. He's had it too good for too long, hasn't he? He just don't know when he's well off. You're right, Dave. Absolutely right. Hi. Well, what's the news? Had a sense of humour, your father? Yes, but no way bank vaults are concerned. You wouldn't have put this in the vault without a very good reason. We've done business with them. It's a bank in Zurich. Hang on. A Swiss bank. And a bank account number. And now you really have got a birthday to celebrate. Oh, God, the party. Well, come on, we'll have a great time. Uh, by the way, I might be a little late. I've got to go and look at a promising piece of dockland. 
Oh. All right. Oh, yeah, you had a bit of a setback with Boswell then, Charlie. Don't believe everything you hear, Ronald. <laughs> Hidden microphones, indeed. You've been watching too much television. Well, what are you working on at the moment, Ronald? Oh, serious outbreak of theft. A pattern is emerging, I believe. Yeah, mostly little pink flowers on black nylon. Some loony's been nicking underwear from the local laundrette. <laughs> God, Jones, doesn't it make you jealous, eh? There he is, working on the front line in the battle against serious crime. Sergeant Chisholm, Sergeant Rycott, Super wants to see you both right away. Take the place apart? You must be thinking there's somebody else, Pop. What's this? I don't approve of members of the public being endangered in this way, Sergeant. No. However, you say there was a witness? Yes, sir. Come on, man, who? Arthur Daly, sir. <coughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm confident I can get Daly onto the stand, sir. We have witnesses who are prepared to give evidence against Gamage. Allowing for the usual cases of amnesia on the stand, we need all we can get. We'll subpoena daily. It's your job to make sure he turns up and says the right things. Meanwhile, have either of you two got a valid passport? Well, as a matter of fact, I have, yes, sir. Actually, no, sir, but... Any reason why you couldn't take a trip at short notice? Not at all, sir. All right, sir, I'd like if you posted. In the meantime, get these gamage witnesses sorted out. That'll be all. Thanks, sir. See, the thing is, shortly after buying the motor, brand new, the uh, previous owner, who uh, happens to be a personal friend of mine, had a complete change of heart about the old concept of motoring. How do you mean? Pollution. He could not bring himself to wreak further havoc on the ecology of Croydon. So it has sat in the drive, lovingly maintained, but never driven. Oh, excuse me a minute. Um, it's, it's all around. It, it feast your eyes on the upholstery. Uh, can I do anything for you, gentlemen? Come in! Oh, thank you, thank you. Do you recognise me? No, 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 absolutely not. Man's got a defective memory, Mr Pope. Totally, Mr uh, Brownie. No, no, as a matter of fact, I've got a very good memory for faces, but I can honestly say your boat don't ring no bells with me. Uh, apart from a little hint, hint of Peter Laurie in his prime. The man thinks I look like a lorry. He can tell. Oh, look, look, steady with all this. This is my firing system. Sit down, Daly. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> Now listen, chummy bum, we've had a whisper that you might be getting a subpoena in the very near future. Do what? Concerning a very good pal of ours called Mr Gamage. Mm. Now all I'm saying is, you get in that witness box and tell a lot of slanderous lies about my friend, and I'm going to see to it that you come to a lot of harm. I'm going to bite your nose off and stick it right up your... All right, Mr Pope. Keep it clean. He's a sadist, Mr Daly. <laughs> Personally, I blame it on a deprived childhood. Have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Before you do, would you bring Mr. Rose for his car around to the front? It's parked in the usual place. What's wrong with him? He got a bone in his leg or something. Afraid I wouldn't know the first thing about the boss's legs. Please to hear it. <laughs> Mark, it's just Are you with Miss West's party? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> Right! Right! 
Pick it up. Thank you enough. Are you sure you're all right? Yes, really. Well, I better go in. They're all waiting for me. Yes, I must get back to the desk. That's weird, though, isn't it? What? Well, there were two of them, and they had a motor waiting. I didn't know mugging was that lucrative a business. I hope this hasn't spoiled your evening, Miss West. No, I'm fine, really. Right. Yeah, I'll see you later, OK? OK. Thanks again, Terry. Don't be silly. Is, is Annie your girlfriend? Yeah. Well, sort of, you know. Aside your snide innuendos for the time being, I'm merely trying to point out that I do not like men in funny wigs probing me about my lifestyle. It is not seemly for a man in my position to be seen in a witness box. Try another position then. <laughs> Maybe a little better in a dock. <laughs> You're very helpful, aren't you? Here I am on the horns of a right debacle, and all you can oh, do is take the a... unmistakable sound of Arthur Daly bemoaning his miserable lot. What's he? Well, I don't know. Bottle of light ale, Governor, please. Small grapefruit from Mr. Jones here. In fact, um, drinks all round. Eh? Hey? Well, I'll have a bloody Mary with you, Mr. Chisholm. What brought this on? They bring in black hanging? Even traffic wardens rubber bullets. <laughs> no, nothing like that. The sergeant's got a new job, see? That's right. I've been appointed community public relations officer, whereby I socialise with eminent local citizens, thus showing the human face of the old Bill. Oh, the human face of the old Bill. <laughs> You ought to see his hospitality allowance. Yeah? Very generous it is. If you don't believe me, Daly, read this. Uh, Arthur. What? Must never take strange bits of paper off a funny policeman. It's a beaner! I'll serve it on you later, Daly. Don't you worry. It's black mark, McCain. Very big black mark. Thank you very much, Mr. Chisholm. Tell our Taff. Nice one, Tell. Don't know why I bother. That Chisholm, he ain't paid for his drinks, you know. He never does. He's old Bill, isn't he? I thought I might find you here. Hello. Well, as you frequently say, I'm a creature of habit, aren't I? Mm -hmm. This arrived at the club. It's for you. The club? Mm. Hmm? Dear Terry, you were more help to me last night than you can imagine. I enclose a token of my gratitude. Promise me you will use them. Love, Nicky. That was a bird who got mugged. My God, there's two tickets for the Orient Express. The Orient Express, eh? You got a right result there, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> two, eh? Wonder I should take. Eight. Hey, <laughs> what do you want tickets to a Chinese takeaway for? After the Orient Express is not a Chinese takeaway. It's a famous train, isn't it? Eh? You know, Agatha Christie, all that. What? You're going on that? Yeah, she's giving us tickets. I do not believe I'm hearing this. Here I am being hunted like a wild animal, and you're planning a trip to the ends of the earth. After it goes to Venice, not out of Mongolia. Yeah, but what about me? What about a fugitive, a man in a suitcase? I spent last night on mindless Michael's sofa. Oh, my dear. And the detoxicating, de lousing. And a two-gallon tetanus jab. Ugh. Yeah, well, I know it's a bit of a bummer, but I haven't had a holiday for years. Oh, it'll be great to get out of the country for a couple of days. Besides, uh, Annie and I haven't been too clever recently. Give me time to straighten things out, you know. Yeah. 
Get out of the country? Yeah, I've never done it before. Slept on a train in bunks, all that. When's, um, when's it go? Thursday. Oh, a couple of days. Yeah. Ah, oh, well, off you go, Terry. You're overdue anyway. So you mean you don't mind? No, nah, no, nah, of course not. You go and enjoy yourself, my son. Eh? Well, cheers, mate. You'll have to do a bit of hard grafting the next day or so, then. Well, that'd be all right. I'm going to need a bit of spending money, ain't I? <gasps> cool, you've done half look rough, you know. Yeah, I feel rough, too. I haven't even had breakfast. I've got a bar of chocolate here. Here, you know, get that down, you. What's the daisy? <laughs> Things are looking up. Look at that. Ten p in front, and you ain't even had breakfast yet. <laughs> bon appetit. <laughs> Interpol. Yes, Sergeant. I've been through the duty roster over and over. And what with the flu epidemic and the overtime situation, I have no choice but to send you. What exactly will my duties be, sir? You will rendezvous in Boulogne with Francois Leblanc from Interpol, and then the two of you. We'll observe the movements of this man. Remember the secure mat bullion robbery? Oh, yes, indeed, sir. Well, we have reason to believe that it was perpetrated by this man and various European accomplices, not to mention other crimes of a similar nature in Paris, Munich, Amsterdam, hence Interpol. But more importantly, Sergeant, we have reason to believe our bullion was moved into Europe, and we'd rather like to know where it is. If you get my drift, sir. Oh, perfectly, sir. Remember, you're going along at their request as an observer. You have no jurisdiction. You can rely on me to handle the situation with tact, sir. Just concentrate on not making a complete twit of yourself, Sergeant. <laughs> you can tell Rykot that the gamage business is his now. That'll be all. Sir. Thank you. Who drinks all this stuff? I don't know. The missus says it brings the kitchen floor up a tree. Bonjour, Arthur. Come and tell him Inside, I'm about ten minutes ahead of plod. Do you like that? It's French. It's French for how are you? On the brink of a nervous breakdown, since you ask. Yeah, listen, last minute job. Hundred Italian suits coming in at Sparrow's Fart tomorrow morning. No, 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 I can't do it. I'm going to wait tomorrow. Well, you can go straight to the station from here. I'll see that Annie gets there. I'll look, do it for me as a favour, Terry. I mean, bear in mind my situation. All right, all right. But if they're not here on the dot, I'm off. Good boy, good boy. I won't forget it. So where are you going now, then? Building society. <laughs> Is that coming or not? Right, sir. I'm only going for three days. Bleeding time. Turned up out of the blue last night, without a penny to her name, with the kiddies. The kiddies? Yeah, all four of them. <laughs> Terry always wanted a big family. He never told me he was married. Oh, well, sadly, I mean, the marriage is just a piece of paper now. I mean, in his mind, he is a single man, but he feels duty-bound to do right by her. You know, try and help her get back on her feet. He said to say he's sorry, but in the circumstances, he couldn't possibly go away with you. Of course, if you want to go on your own. Certainly not. And you can tell Mr. McCann from me that I don't ever want to see him or speak to him again. Well, if that's the way you want it. That's exactly the way I want it. And the same goes for you, Daly. Look at you. My God, do you think I need small time comment like you and McCann messing up my life? Just who the hell do you think you are? Well, I must ash. Au revoir, is that This right? is not au revoir, Daly. This is goodbye. <laughs> No, 
Nothing. Here you go. You never guess where McCann's off to today. The Flaming Orient Express. Well, why didn't you say so? Well, I just did. The intercity service to Southampton departs from platform two, calling at Maisie's Stone and Winchester. The Venice Saint Laurent Orient Express Pullman car train will depart from platform A at 12:30. It's not the name that's on your list. I'm with uh, Mr. McCann. Annie. Uh, look, we've got to have a little talk. All right, come on in, talk. What's happened? Oh, thank oh. me. My pleasure. You're welcome. Move your butt. Come on, you. What's going on? Look, I think you'd better sit down. Let's go inside. You can't go in there, are you? All right, then, where is she? She's not coming, Terry. Excuse me. Now, listen, Terry, you're going to have to bring all your experience to bear on this one and take it like an adult. I'm going to get you thrown off the train. Her husband turned up. Do what? Yeah. You've gone too far this time, no, no, Sunshine. No, no, sit down, Terry. Sit down. With you? Forget it. I'm getting off. You only regret it, my son. You're going to regret it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He turned up out of the blue, on his upper, so to speak. I mean, she couldn't do a runner without extending an helping hand, could she? That's nice. I think this is real, son. You dumb me up like a kipper, ain't you? Just duck that bleeding subpoena. So what'd you tell her, eh? I suppose my long-lost wife turned up, did she? You are overreacting, Terry. Oh, no, yeah. no, no permanent damage has been done. Hey! You peckish? Aye. Hey. Leave the nose bag on this choo-choo's top notch. Stuff the nose bag. As soon as we get the folks and I'm coming straight back to town. Suit yourself, suit yourself. I will. I will. Uh, hold on, look, look I might be a bit old fashioned. It's me, Nikki. I gave you the tickets. That's right, yeah. Hello. It appears. Uh, we're sitting together for lunch. <laughs> How charming. Yes. Can I get you anything, sir? Yeah, large VAT, please. Beg your pardon, sir. Large VAT. OK, 
Please don't get off the train, Terry. I need your help. What are you on about? Look, I know I should have told you before, but I was afraid you wouldn't come. Look, hold on. What sort of help do you mean? I want you to look after this for me. Look, remember the other night, Terry? Well, that wasn't an ordinary mugging. Someone's after me. After you? Why? I can't explain now. My boyfriend's waiting for me, but please, will you help me? Uh, yeah, I suppose so, all right, yeah. But listen, the first chance you get, I want the full story, all right? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Well, we better get out of here now. I can't tell you how grateful I am. Well, maybe you can try a bit later on, eh? Decided not to chuck yourself off the train then. I'm not talking to you. Well, that's all right. I talk to myself. Nice drink, Arthur. Yeah, not bad, Arthur. No, another one, Arthur. Well, I wouldn't say no. Shut Arthur. up. I thought you weren't talking to me. Oi. Has something happened? It has, hasn't it? I can always tell with you. Something has come up as it happens. God, it's all about fickle. Should have had a closer look at those tickets. Why? I would have seen the strings attached, wouldn't I? Is it um? Something to do with? Yeah. No, she did. No. She only came barging in the loo while I was in there, didn't she? No. God's truth. Well, that's the international travel scene for you, isn't it? Strange bird, a costume, a carsey. We're not even out of Brixton yet. <laughs> Everything all right? I'm fine. Look, I really think you ought to let me look after it. Don't worry, Mark. It's safe. OK. Sir? Yeah? Oh. Are you sure that'll be all, sir? Yeah. More of them, Evan. Thank you. And last year, I did the Trans-Siberian. Oh, it was most interesting. Trains are my life, you see. Show me a bogey and I'm in heaven. <laughs> I can imagine. What are you going to have, Terence? Well, I think I'll have the loop. The loop, then, uh... There's no soup on here. It's pottage. Pottage is soup. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're talking about tabloidoti, yeah, I know about that. So that'll be one soup, then, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have soup. Yeah, yeah. Two soup. soups. Dos, uh, dos. Two, he's English. Did she make any mention of financial remuneration? You mean, did I ask her to bung me? Very Orient Express. Very Terence McCann. You think we could elbow the language at a gutter for the duration of this journey? We are with very influential people. People with a decent bit of wedge. In answer to your question, no, I didn't. Anyway, she paid for the tickets for this. Do you know how much that costs? There are always expenses. Do you know something? When I got up this morning, I was all set for a nice little holiday with this terrific lady, right? What have I got? You instead of her. A wobbly bird follows me in and out of the carsy, and the prospect of you rabbiting all the way to Venice. So don't give me any earache about nice little learners, right? Moan, moan. Oh. Moan. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Ah, pleased to meet you, Mr. Morgan. Arthur Daly. He didn't sound Welsh, did he? He seemed like a nice chap. I could make some very interesting contacts on this trip. Yeah, you could, you're right. Yeah, not many. I mean, this lot are just crying out for fire-damaged radio alarms from Taiwan, aren't they? Oh, sorry, Terence, I thought it was the leg of the table.
moaning, blimey, you're not supposed to be here in the first place. Yeah, but it's abroad, isn't it? It always makes me nervous. I mean, plod with guns, iffy water, sawn off toilets. Looks like we're in for a very pleasant trip, gentlemen. Yeah, I was just saying the same to my companion here. Thank you. Nice looking woman, isn't she? Didn't really notice. Nothing's what it was, Terry. Look, White Cliffs of Dover are not even white anymore. Oh, cool, they're not even there anymore. Of course not. It's folks then, you burk. Oh. Yeah, just see that lot in the bar? Sandals, knapsacks, humanity. Travel certainly gives you a perspective, Terry. Do you clock that geezer with the gold Amsteds? No. Uh, why? No, no, no. Want another vodka or Yeah, what? come yeah. on. Sergeant uh, Chisholm. Chisholm, yes. Albert. Albert. Albert Chisel. I'm uh, Francois. Right. Well, ready when you are? You have uh, some time. You can have a little drink, huh? Eh? What do you take? Uh, of uh, light ale. Come on. No, whatever. Alors, uh, demande à l'eau. Oh, yes, the, um, the, the uh, rate of exchange being what it is, I'm very keen to export. My card, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yes, everyone wants to get on the dollar these days. Oh, crying out, the dollar's in full and broad, boy. Uh, I'm afraid, sir, you're laboring under a misapprehension. <laughs> he don't uh, labor at all, this one. You see, I am not in commerce. Oh. Uh, you know, my husband's a judge. Oh, uh, how, how very interesting. He won't want 200 radio alarms, then, will he? Terry. I beg oh. your pardon? Nothing, nothing. Yeah. Come on, give, give, give the judge his luck. Pleasure. Oh, thank nice you. Nice to meet you. Very kind of you. Have a nice, nice day. Good evening, you. gentlemen. Oh, oh, good evening. I'm the chef of the time. Welcome aboard the Orient Express. This is your cabin attendant. He will be looking after you throughout the journey. Oh, that's, that's very oh, nice. Oh, cheers. See that, Terry? That is typical French. Oh, dressing the chef up, look like General de Gaulle. 
Why are you in the kitchen? Good evening, gentlemen. I don't know. You probably... Hey, you have a cherry? Oh, man. Oh, that looks like... ...quatre cent trois. Man. ...a destination de l'île. ...la particule qui est sur le port. Ça va pas vous dire. Attention... Your cabin, monsieur. Thank you. Hello. We meet again. Yeah. I'm jolly. In it, in it. Think you cracked it there, son? Eh? She wants your little body, doesn't she? A simple courtesy between fellow travellers, Terence. Something you wouldn't understand. It's a bit cushy, isn't it? it Allow is. me to show your facilities, gentlemen. Oh, far away, sunshine. Uh, Claude, monsieur. Uh, my name is Claude. Claude. Ooh. Voila. Well, that's nice, isn't it? Scotland Yard. <laughs> Bonsoir. Je suis le chef de train, je vous souhaite la bienvenue. Permettez-moi, monsieur. Par ici. Mais monsieur, je vous en prie, prenez votre place. Votre compartiment. Et on dîne à quelle heure Non, dans une heure. Merci. Oui, oui. Non, non, gardez-le. Je suis à votre disposition pendant le voyage. Monsieur René Dufort, veuillez vous se présenter des d'accueil. J'espère que tout est à votre satisfaction, monsieur. Monsieur est anglais euh, oui, Un petit peu, quoi, oui. <rire> bon, bon. Un petit apparitif, euh, peut-être Ah, plus tard, merci. Thank you. Oh. These men, Chisel, they have uh, never seen you before. Of course not. Make a basic mistake like that. Well, remember that you are here as an observer. If there's any uh, trouble, leave it to Interpol. I have already been briefed. Thank you. Excellent. Well, have a nice holiday while we watch these bad gangsters. Hmm? Eat, drink. You are in France now. Really? Thank you for reminding me. Anticipating a spot of trouble with a wine waiter. À la suite d'un incident technique, le train omnibus numéro 209. Who? Oh, he's all right, I promise. I didn't tell you before, but on the way to the club the other night, I was attacked. It wasn't an ordinary mugging. I think someone had been following me. Anyway, Terry helped me. For God's sake, why didn't you tell me all this? I didn't want you to think that I was imagining things or, I don't know, losing my nerve. He's travelling with an older man, yes? The one who looks like a bookie? Yes. Le train 626. I wish you'd told me before. Don't be stupid, you're not having a top. Why not? I don't want you treading on my face when you're coming half cut. I will not be coming in half cut. Oh, no. If I happen to be a little bit wobbly, it'll be the, the motion of the train. Gives aggravation to my inner ear. Yeah, Come on, just see what you're doing. Looks and cosy, isn't it? Oh, dear. More bloody room on my own beat. <laughs> Change est à la disposition des passagers dans le hall principal. Nous rappelons aux 
passagers qui doivent être munis de leur passeport ou de carte d'identité pour une opération de chambre. What does this one do? Cleans my teeth. Double dodging, me. I mean, it could be anything. I still think we should open it. No. But it might be something iffy, like drugs. She might be using us as donkeys. Mules, Arthur, mules. Well, if not, we should come to some sort of working arrangement. I mean, she slaps double glazing on her minces, drags virtual strangers into the carsey. I mean, it's got to be dodgy, isn't it? Oh! Oh! Can't even drive bloody trains. Oh, are you all right, Mr. Hine? <coughs> that old bleak right. Yeah, well, I'll try and get the full SP as soon as possible. Yeah, you do that. I'll see if that Garcon can get us a tincture. So she's got herself some help, has she? What are we going to do, Mr. Crane? Well, I'm going to do some socialising. We'll get a result. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sorry. Then uh, I might think about moving down there next year. Let's make a move. Would either of you two have a light by any chance? Ah, here's our art starter. Oh, am I disturbing you? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, no, I'm uh, Mrs. Helen Spender. Oh, Arthur Daly. And this is my boy, Terence. Hello. Your boy? He's your son. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Or uh, perhaps your. Uh... Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, he's my business associate. He looks after the executive side of things. Yeah, I do all the dirty work for him. I see. And you're sharing this. Tiny cabin. Uh, well, uh, Terence's lady friend was unable to come. Yeah, family problems, right, Arthur? Yeah, quite, quite so. And what about your lady friend, Arthur? Oh, oh no, 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 nothing like that. <laughs> oh, I am, of course, married to my wife. How convenient. Uh, who is currently indoors, uh, at home. And here you are on the Orient Express while she's at home. She must be very understanding. Oh, yes, indeed, yes. A prince amongst wives, no question. A princess, even. Ah. Oh. Oh, would you? Uh... A Gordon's martini, very dry with a twist. Uh, straight up? Don't be cheeky, Clog. Go and get it. Straight up means no ice. Oh, no. I oh, know. And what takes you to the Pearl of the Adriatic? Pearl who? Venice, your pillock. Exactly. Oh, oh of course, yes. Uh, uh, well, I like to mix business with pleasure, you know. The entrepreneur never sleeps. Mind you, the second-hand car market's taken a bit of a bashing over there since they flooded the streets, isn't it? I'm sorry? Oh, don't be. He'll survive. Gordon Bennett. Who oh, is he on the train? How did I? Oh, good evening. Crane. James Crane. Oh, Arthur Daly. Hello. Oh, 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 good. Just the man. Whiskey and water. Oh, yeah. and the same again for these good people. Please. Oh, that's very nice. I'm all right. Have you, Monsieur? You sure? Positive. I was hoping you and Terry could join me for dinner. Oh, that's very nice of you. Well, that's a shame, because I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, that's very nice of you. Popular, aren't we, Arthur? What do you do with yourself when you're back in bloody? This and that. I thought so. I adore Venice at this time of the year. No, of course you do. Perceptive sort of bloke, aren't you? Oh, look at that. It's typical French, isn't it? Nice, but I'm a French. Excuse me. 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 I'll catch up with you later. You do that, son. Hey, yeah, come. Come. Just me, okay? Why me? Why me? You're ill? I've got to go back to the cabin. Yeah, but it's time for l'aperitif. Don't you ever think about anything else? It's normal. Uh, you're quite sure everything is all right, Yeah, 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 spot on. Mercy, mercy. You may return to the kitchen now. Enjoy the rest of your journey, gentlemen. Thank you.
You're um, gasping for a cuff. No, don't sit down. Get out of the way. Oh, you, uh, you're looking for something. The envelope. I put it there. I know it. Very humorous. Here, uh, what do you make of all that? I don't know, really. But that crane geezer, he's onto us. I'm sure of it. I have uh, brought more drinks, gentlemen, ah. with the compliments of the train. Uh, the others were bouleversé. Oh, were they? I didn't get a chance to find out. Merci. Uh, à la vôtre, monsieur. I have a message for Mr. Mac Oh. There you go, Claude. Merci. Oh, damn. Mm. So, what is it? Another cunning conflab in the Kazi. She's going to come and see me as soon as she can get away. She wants to have a talk. Alone. Oh, that is nice, isn't it? Well, do you mind if I have a quick wash and brush up in my own gaff before you start tristing all over the place? Well, hurry up. I don't know when she's going to get here. Alors, ce mec, this, um, this man, Daly. Daly. He is uh, dangerous. He's a menace. He's an accident looking for someone to happen. What's he doing on this train? Really typical. I see you cannot sleep with a man like this. Kill him. Ah, the famous British police brutality. You must not endanger the surveillance. You must stay here. Entrez. Votre boisson, monsieur? Ah, merci. The uh, attendant will bring you dinner here in the cabin. Et voilà. Oh, merci, monsieur. Uh, Francois, um, I am right in assuming that the... Uh, price of the meals is included in the ticket. No. But who cares? We are not paying. You have a good, um... Oh. Um, expenses, yeah. Oh, uh, <clears throat> more than adequate, I can assure you. Chin. <laughs> Madame? You go on the inside. You go first. I'm sitting there. Petit mineral water, s'il vous plaît. Bien, monsieur. C'est tout. Hmm? Uh, monsieur desires nothing more. Uh, no. Bien, monsieur. La da da di di da 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 di. Vienna, pearl of the Adriatic. You're in a good mood, aren't you? Yeah, well, I've never really rated trains, you know, Terry. Screaming kids, skinheads and sandwiches. The cars here wash. But this is very fair, very reasonable. Yeah. I could have been having a lovely time. I've always regretted I never travelled more extensively, you know. But her indoors held me back. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She liked a dodgy wine. She don't travel well. <laughs> I did get her to Majorca once. But she went bright pink and her ankles ballooned up. Oof. After that, it was uh, back to normal. But the thing is, you know, broad stairs doesn't meet the requirements of someone like me. No, I well, can understand that, Arthur. Right. You will find me in the dining car, looking double mysterious, toying with a chilled pink vodka with a cherry. Straight up. Oh, very droll. You behave yourself. Mm. Think of Annie. Well, listen, you. Monsieur Daly. Good evening, Judge. Ah, uh, waiter, another Tom Collins, please. <laughs> Old gentleman hasn't lost his sense of humor, has he? <laughs> he thought I was you. 
Good evening. Evening. I guess. Yeah. There's no one else on the train comes even close. But I thought this Fabrizio was your brother-in-law's cousin. That don't make no difference. Contract's a contract. So I'll just have to blow him away. Oh, yes. Pearl of the Adriatic. This is just the time of year for a bit of Venice. You've been there before, have you? Uh, not, not exactly. Uh, I mean, not since I was a young man. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to glimpsing St. Peter's again. You mean some marks? Oh, yeah, that and all. Definitely. It's not that I don't trust your judgment. I just think it's a mistake to involve other people. My God. If they found out how much money was involved... You're right. I'll get it back. Look, Mark, you must believe me. It's not because I thought you weren't... Up to it? I'm sorry. Just get the envelope back, and then we'll manage on our own. Okay, darling? Okay. Uh, don't you think I ought to come with you? No, I can deal with it, really. Okay. came in and bashed me over the boats. Well, um, can I do anything? Kiss a life? No, I swear, no, I'll be all right. Oh. Look, Terry, I know this isn't the best time, um, but I've come to get my envelope back. Hello. Been rather a long time. You all right, darling? Yes, I'm fine, but Terry's been hit on the head. Oh, really? Yes, really. I hate to say this, I haven't got it. Too many countries throw things away. Merci. Jean Pétion. 81 Latour. Oh, yes. The entrepreneurial flame still flickers in Great Britain. You are a poet, Mr Daly. Thank you, Mrs Morgan. It is a subject very dear to my heart. But what of the uh, lamentable British industrial relations? Unimaginative man management. There's your answer to that one. Not enough consideration given to job satisfaction. You show me a man without job satisfaction, I'll show you a man without quality of life. What's he talking about? God knows. As an example, let me tell you about a load of Japanese tape decks I stumbled on once. Well done, Mr Crane. Thank you, Mr Hull. Well, it would work, but I'd only go backwards. Now, I knew the Well, we'll be pulling into Paris soon. Have you had a look at it yet? No. Nah. Now, nah, there's plenty of time for that, mate. Try them out in microwave ovens and some of them are Satisfied customers, job satisfied. You've gone a bit green around the gills, Mr. Crane. You wait here. 200 fridge freezers. 200 fridge freezers. And I knocked them all out in the one day. Hello. Oh, hello. And where's your young friend, Arthur? A very good question. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to ferret him out. Hello? <laughs> all hands above the tables, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's all right. Have an aperitif with me first. Oh. I'm 
Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It is only a minor fault. Silly old bugger. Hmm. Now, why don't you stick to tourists, eh? Now, tell me where it is. I'm going to chop your ears off. All right. No need for violence. It's in the bag. Did you see anyone? No. They could have got off just now, for all I know, if they exist at all. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I'm assuming Nikki has had the good sense not to explain the contents of the envelope to you. Nonetheless, you're obviously aware that it's of some value. Look, Mark, I think we should... Let me finish, darling. Yeah, let him finish, darling. Now, I would say from the look and the sound of you that you're the sort of chap who recognises a good thing when he sees one, even if he doesn't quite understand it. In other words, I'm not at all sure I believe this stuff about someone creeping up and banging you on the head. Really? Well, let me tell you something. From the look and sound of you, I would say I'm the sort of chap you should try very hard not to annoy. Well, for God's sake, you two. Terry! Terry, what's up? Terry, I've just been in a fight. Hey? I fell off the train. 
I thought my time would come, Terry. But you're probably not about. I, I wasn't dead. I was alive, and I was hallucinating. I seen Chisholm working in the kitchens like a ghost. Terry, Terry, I'm sick. I'm sad. Sit down, will you? Oh, please don't shout at me, Terry. Look, Terry, you might be really ill. Really ill. Listen, while you were getting legless, I was knocked on the head. I was mugged, and young Lockinvar here believes we're ripping him off. Well, you were the last one with the envelope. Oh, that I've got that somewhere. You what? Well, what do you think I got in a fight for? You had a fight and got this back? Yeah, some old codger. He not that he wasn't a bit tasty, mind you. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Oh, not at all. It's nothing. I mean, my reason may be permanently impaired. I may mean, spend the rest of my I'll life. I'll take it now, if you don't mind. Chisholm in the kitchen. I think you should apologise, Mark. All right, I apologise. Come on, Nicky, let's go. Arthur, are you all right? Mm. Oh, he's got a nasty lump on his head. That is his head. I'll see you back in the cabin. I don't like all this. You're so sensitive, Terry. Had a setup with the bloke you had a row with, and whoever hit me over the head. That makes at least two people on this train who want Nicky's goods, whatever they are. Look, after all the trouble you've had, I'd better tell you. You see, my father died, leaving a lot of money. Nice. Well, the only trouble is he was. Well, his name was Jack South. South? Jack South? As in Crime King's Missing Millions? Yes. I knew there was a bit of breed in there. Well, Mark and I have booked through to Venice, but we're getting off in Switzerland. You see, the money's in a bank in Zurich, but there's one small drawback. There always is. We haven't got the complete account number. So what's in the envelope then? Part of that account number and some clues. You see, my father was a very cautious man. Well, do you mean you haven't worked it out yet? No, not yet. But I know the answers in that envelope. Oh. Oh, Arthur, are you all right? No, I've just come over all week again. Where's my duty freeze? I'll need a lifesaver. I'll get his bottle. Who is it? It's me, Mr. Payne. Oh, dear. What happened to you? I got jumped. Two of them. From behind. Who was it? I don't know. I think they got off the train at Paris. Did they get the goodies? Did you see anything of that old bloke with the antique clubber? Yeah. I saw him bolting into his cabin a couple of minutes ago. Good. Superb dinner. I have had a superb dinner. Everything is wonderful. Everybody's uh, had dinner, have they? Of course. Are you at in the cabin? Huh? No, I, uh, I wasn't very uh, hungry as it happens. Relax. Have a good time. Take it easy, Chison. That is an order. I do not intend to relax. I do not intend to be patronized by you. And what is more, if you poke me like that again, so help me, I'll stick one right in your boat race. Good evening. Can I buy you a drink? No, thank you. I'm waiting for a friend. Uh, gin and tonic, please. Actually, I was wondering if you'd come out for dinner with me sometime. Helen. I beg your pardon. Well, you are Helen Spender, aren't you? I used to work with your old man, God rest his soul. I'm Harry Riddler. I expect the name's familiar to you. My late husband never discussed his work with me. <laughs> that figures. <laughs> I don't know who you are or what you want, but if you don't leave me alone, I'll complain to the chef de train. I want what you want, Helen, but we're not the only ones. I mean, on our own, we've got no chance, but... You're either mad or drunk. Maybe. 
Somebody on this train is going to Switzerland to empty Jack South's bank account. And I know who it is. just got off. He's on here somewhere. Listen, any problems, let me know, all right? Thanks, Terry. Jack Sal's little girl, eh? Ooh. You play your cards right there, Terry. What? Off. She'll never get her hands on that dough, will she? Why not? Look, that Pratt Mark might look all right posing in a Range Rover. He's got about as much chance of keeping that envelope as I have playing for England. Postman's knocking here, isn't it? Ah! He's there again, Terry. Who? He's standing there. Chisholm! You look. All right, all right. He is an old it's Chisholm, isn't it? Is. Very droll, McCann. Oh, Mr. Chisholm, is you? Oh, thank God. Well, I wish I was as pleased to see you, Daly. You having a little holiday, are you? Holiday? I don't know the meaning of the word. Well, I suppose there's no harm in telling you I am liaising with Interpol. They're the ones who send the flowers, aren't they? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> we may be trundling across foreign soil, but sooner or later we'll be back on the manor where I rule, OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I preferred you when you were some sort of installation, Mr. Chisholm. The thing is, it is vital that certain persons on this train do not realise that I am a policeman. So I'm asking for your cooperation in this matter. As far as the other passengers are concerned, you do not know me, right? Who are they? Well, there's no need for you to know that. Oh, well, in that case, there's no need for any cooperation, is there? I mean, it goes well against the grain, doesn't it? I might have known. All right, there are some faces on the train who helped the late but not lamented Jack South pull a certain bullion robbery. The bullion has never been recovered, that is all I'm going to say. You're all right, then, Mum's a word. Yeah, Stun's a word. Listen, you're all right for a minute. I want to go and get a lager. I'm gasping. Yeah, all right. It don't be long now, will it? No, just a minute, that's all. Come back soon. Yeah, all right. So there is uh, one more favour that you could do for me. Oh, uh, help yourself. <laughs> uh, no. Um, <clears throat> well, as a matter of fact, I, I had to leave in rather a hurry. And uh, well, to be frank, the, uh, the Metropolitan Police are not exactly generous with expenses. So, and uh, <clears throat> so. <laughs> am, am I understanding you right, Mr. Chisholm? That you are a bit short of dosh. My fear, Kurt. Yeah, we want it. Must congratulate you, Mark, on a job well done. Ring, McCann. That was them, wasn't it? Those two older blokes. Why so interested? Come on, you don't see top draw international villains every day down Fulham Broadway, do you? Oh, no, that was them, wasn't it? The big crowd was Kurt Wengler. Was Jack South's top man on the continent. Huh? And the yachtsman with the oily tan was one Ted Moore. Yes, I'm sure you've heard of him. Ted Moore, I call cool. well, well, well. Who is it? Terry. Hi. Are you all right? Yeah. Listen, do you know where Mark's gone? Oh, to the bar, why? Does he know anyone else on this train? No, I don't think so. Ah. I've just found out there are two blokes on this train that used to work with your dad. And when I say work, I mean 
did the business. But who are they? Well, the point is, I've just seen Mark go into their cabin with them. <laughs> he must have just got chatting to them. He's got the envelope, hasn't he? No, he hasn't. He has. I gave it to him. No, the one he's got's got newspaper in it. I got confused and gave it to you. I made up a fake one. So, is that the real one, then? Yeah. Oh. What do you think he's doing with those people? I don't know yet. Well done, young Mark. Your father would have been proud of you. I only wish he was around to see me collect Jack's nest egg. We must drink to absent friends. To my father. Pause it. to a deposit account in Zurich. Huh. What the hell is this? It was there. I saw it. Mark, this is very upsetting. Right. I think it's time for a talk with Jack South's daughter. What are you doing? I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm watching Moore and Wengler. Of course, of course. Who is the uh, young man? I don't know yet. A social meeting, perhaps? I think not. We must follow procedure. What is the standard Interpol procedure in these situations? Hmm? Not a full course me, I expect. Ted Moore, that's nice, isn't it? See Venice and die. I'm gonna die before I get there. I'm worried about Mark. I think we should do something. Nothing's gonna happen to him. Do you really think he's involved with those men? I don't think anything. Except we've got to get out of this cabin and go down to the bar and mix with the punters. They won't try anything there, all right? I want to get off, Terry. Is there a request stop? It must be in this one, Mr. Brown. Right. Yeah, come on, you may as well come out. Well, come out of there, you old bastard. I'll kick this door in. If I haven't got it, you can search my cabin, you can search. Search me, but you won't find it. Let me search you, Mr. Crane. Mm. Now, where's that envelope? <laughs> that horrible little man Daly took it. I only wanted something for my old age. You see, I worked on the inside for Jack's house, and I was highly respected by the bank. And then suddenly I lost everything my career, my family, everything. person we were hoping to see. Goodbye, Fabrizio. It's not poison. It's just business. Where are we? Well, I don't really know, to be honest. I just opened the nearest door. This has saved us a lot of trouble. Look, let's all just relax, right? We're just 
came in the wrong cabin, that's all. On the contrary, your choice was excellent. Who are you? Friends and associates of your father. Look, uh, you're not going to shoot anybody, are you? I wouldn't bank on that, pal. I used to look after Jack South's money. I used to sit on it until the uh, dust settled. I was in a basement in Islington for four months and never saw the light of day. Then I was on the moors for must have been eight months with only a lame sheepdog for company. And in all that time, I never touched a penny of his money. So, dead or alive, Jack owes me. Your father died at home. My husband died in Parkhurst. Well, I'm alive, and I intend to enjoy what my husband couldn't. My father looked after his people. Listen, there's no point discussing it with these vultures. Right. Now empty your pockets and I'll take that bag. My God, Arthur! No, you don't expect me to fall for that one, do you? It's going to fall ah! out! Ah! Oh, oh, my dear, I'm sorry I'm late for dinner. I had to pop out for five minutes. Come on, get up, get up. You're right, Arthur. Oh, my God, another one. Hold him, hold him. Give us the gun, give us the gun. Now, uh, I think I'm going to need your key. All right? Come on. You two are going to have to get to know each other a little better, all right? And you won't need this, will you? Not now, my dear. That's a good girl. Arthur Parker's a very tired boy. Arthur, stone me. Come on. Oh, Mr. Vaughan, you see a doctor or something? Something or something, you stand there. You're right, Arthur Parthen. And they knock me in. No problem, madame. Monsieur? Bonjour. No, everything's fine, thank you very much. Yes, terrific. No problems at all. Your friend, he's unwell. Ah, no, he's having a lovely time, aren't you, mate? Perhaps you would like some assistance in returning him to his birth. Is what? No, no, it's all right. No, we're going to go down the bar. He needs a little pick me up. Oh, oh, monsieur, I'm not sure if your friend is in any oh. condition to go to the bar. What's that supposed to mean? Ah, uh, uh, officer, just a man. I don't know what sort of train you call this, but I strongly object to being ejaculated while it's in motion. Oh. He's had a bang on the head. If you cannot control him, I will have him removed from the bar. You'll have to remove me first, sunshine. Oh, wait, Terry. Don't worry, we'll look after him. Pardon me, monsieur. I can't find my Angelo. Have you seen my Angelo? I'm sorry, madame. What is your Angelo? Well, he's a poison. What else could he be? I think this man is in important contact with our suspects. Oh, do you, Francis? What makes you say that? Eh? Francois, it is, you know, the policeman's... Uh, Smell. Intuition. Oh, you've got one of those, have you? Le Hunch. It would be most useful to know who he is. His name is Mark Graves, date of birth 19361. Do you know this man? I've looked him up on the passenger list. You might also be interested to know that his old man, one Digger Graves, used to work with the same villains young Mark is now talking to. What does your intuition make of that, eh, Francois? I think it is um, very good. I will make sure that your superiors get a report of your most useful contribution. It will compensate for your failure to blend in correctly. I refer, of course, to your suit. Uh. Uh, hello, do you know, I'm forever blowing bubbles. I think there must be the water. Come on. <laughs> hello, my dear. It's that waiter again. I think he's drunk. Hey, look, Terry, that's the Judge Jeffries. Hey, hang, 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 Why is that man staring at you? Arthur Daly! 
Hey, Cherry, Cherry, look, in the plot. This is Delhi. Why didn't you tell me? Screw them, what? On you, Trieste. What a bloody hell are you playing at, Daly? They seek him here, they seek him there, they seek old Chisholm everywhere. I like a DJ, very cheap. I thought I'd tell oh, Calm down, Charlie, he's had a bit of a nasty turn, all right? I don't care if he's had kittens, you just get him out of here. Yeah. Oh, Enjoy your holiday. Uh, nice to have made your acquaintance. Hey, Terry, did you hear that? He don't remember who we are. He's got schizophrenia. Do you fancy me or something? Tell you what, why don't you come and have a closer look? I might just do that. Come on in. I'm waiting. Leave it. You have plenty of time. I don't like being talked out by some tuppy hateny chance out of it. Terry, 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 there's too much talking and not enough drinking going on in this gap. Garçon, large VAT with a red cherry straight up. There they are. They're the ones who robbed us and locked us up. Hello, my dear. Just in time for your nose bag. You must Bloody detain them. Search their luggage. Now make me sit down. Go on. I can't more. I want to front this one. Go get the girl. Mickey! Right. Oh! Oh! You vile creature! I am from Interpol! French cretin. Sit back, come on, sir. Merci, merci. Come on, sir. 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 You're right, love. Oh. 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 Now I'm going to teach you to fight like a gentleman. Come on, put him up there. Sorry, that be some I think this is our stop, don't you? With a floor, it goes straight up. It's a mountain, Arthur. My, my mind's a plane. Where's the train going? I think it's better. Well, I suppose it's too much to expect assistance from you two. Too busy looking after yourselves. Yeah, he's better. Oh, it's a luggage. number isn't complete. You see where these question marks are? Yeah. That was taking the year they won the double, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Dad celebrated for a fortnight. Oh, oh. But the answer must be in this photograph. I mean, he wouldn't have put it into the vault unless there was a very good reason. Oh, no, you're football, don't you? Well, I know about Arsenal. Yeah, Charlie George, he scored the only goal in the quarter-final replay. Good old Charlie. What a player he was, eh? Oof. Yeah, that's right. Number 11. Oh, hang on. Yeah, number 11. Of course. This photograph is filled with numbers. Yeah. Knowing Dad, the run into the cup would be as good a starting point as anything else. Not guilty. Shut up, you. Right, so what have we got? Sorry. Two question marks. Yeah. That's a double digit, right? Right. OK, Story scored twice in the first semi. Story? So it's two number fours then, isn't it? Right. 
OK, George Graham, he's number eight. That's right. Can't you go anywhere on your own? I have just extricated myself from an international incident involving the police forces of three countries. I've got a bruised rib cage, sore feet, and no chance of working for Interpol again, and it's all down to you, Daly. Mr Chisholm, I am an innocent party where all this is concerned. At this moment in time, I shall be relaxing in a gondolier. Well, there won't be any relaxing when we get back to Fulham Broadway. It'll make your life a misery. It already is, Mr Chisholm. It already is. Right, the equaliser was scored by the sub, Eddie Kelly. No, oh, yeah, but that's no good, is it? You need a single digit. He's number 12, isn't he? Oh. Swipe me, it's Chisholm. You better put that away. Morning, Mr Chisholm. You look well. <laughs> Talking of Fulham Broadway, I take it you are now heading in that direction. Oh, no, Mr Chisholm. You see, we were so choked at the premature demise of our little train trip, we're going to dawdle through Switzerland for a bit. Yeah, Arthur's got a job lot of underwater cuckoo clocks he wants to knock out. Yeah, yeah, I might pick up a few gnomes in Zurich, too. Oh, here comes our train. Oh, yeah, now you stay here, Mr Chisholm. With any luck, you should get a train that'll get you home in time for tea. Bye-bye. Keep smiling. The equaliser that Arsenal scored in the final was credited to Eddie Kelly, but George Graham always reckoned that he scored it. Now, Dad was a big fan of Graham, so he's bound to have sided with him. So, look, we've got number eight there. Well, who scored the... Charlie George scored the winner, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. Number 11. Look, it fits. That's it. You've done it. you cracked it. What are you going to do now, then? Oh, I don't know. My plans were always with Mark. Come on, you'll get over it. it. Might take a few years, but you'll get over it. I'm glad you're here, Terry. Yeah, I'm glad I'm here too. I mean, be sensible. The two of us can take you any time. Well, you're welcome to have a go. Arthur. 
Am I in trouble? So shut up. What, then? What, what, what? Kick him! Oh, yeah. Oh! Sorry, Mr. Chisholm. Sit down and shut up, right? Come on, Bailey. Use your loaf. Oh! Afraid you've lost that. Well, no hard feelings, eh? Look <laughs> after him then. Go to Switzerland or what? Follow Broadway. Go on, Princess. Right. <laughs> you all right? I'm feeling very disconcerted. Here we are again. No word of a lie, Arthur here was hanging on the outside of the train, weren't you, son? He'll do anything to get out of buying a drink. <laughs> Look, as I've already explained, this huge American ice cream grabbed hold of me Chuck me up against the oh, door. Tell him about the gun. Go on. I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. With a silencer. How booze we at this stage, Arthur? Boozed, Arthur? Hardy touched a drop. Oh. Hey, listen, tell him about the fight with a 90-year-old. Oh, be fair, Terry. He wasn't a day over 80. <laughs> Look, I don't see the point in raking over ancient history with you two interjecting snide remarks all the time. All in all, Arthur, taking everything into consideration, would you say you had a value for money holiday? <laughs> oh, very fair, Dave. Very fair. I mean, considering I was practically brown bread. Well, I just a man from Interpol. Oh, good. How reassuring. To find our indigenous British scum back in its natural habitat. Grotty drinker in West London. Where's that thing go? Come to pay me back my wine, Mr Chisholm. Mr Chisholm found himself financially embarrassed on foreign soil. And I couldn't let him starve. All right, Daly, that'll do. I am, as it happens, in a position to repay you the sum of £100. One, ninety-two, ninety-three. Yes, yes, and here is five four, in coins. Ninety-five, one hundred. No beads. <laughs> well, well, well. Mister Raycott, some sort of financial transaction going on, Charlie? Thank you, Mister Chisholm. Nice to do business with you. So we're all square about the video recorders, right? You shut it, McCann. Mm. Oh dear, oh dear. What are you driving at, Rycott? Perhaps you can tell me, Charlie. I'll tell you this, Sergeant Rycott. If you so much as hint that I'm taking cash payments from Arthur Daly, I... Will... You're what? Give me a backhander? Oh, did you hear that, Mellish? A backhander. Oh, very droll, Guff. Right, Rycott. I'll be looking for an opportunity to wipe that smile off. Thank God, the police are going to have a fight. Uh, yeah, well, it's the cutbacks, you see. I mean, they've cut out the middleman now and are bashing each other up. <laughs> Arthur, Rycott has still got that subpoena. Try the back door. 
This is the last time I'm going to put up with his unprofessional behaviour in a public place. Well, we'd better settle this outside, Charlie. You suggest we go and fight on the public street. What's the matter? Don't you think you can handle it? I could handle a clown like you with one hand tied behind my back. Uh, Gov, what? Weren't you wanting a word with Arthur? Oh, God almighty! Bellish! Come on! I am finished with you, Rycock Jones. I think our policemen are wonderful. 